Welcome back to the Fit Minute Podcast, fitness for real people, with your host, Gabrielle Mazar. Gabrielle Mazar. On this week's episode, Gabrielle interviews Alicia Webb of Pilates with Alicia in Houston, Texas. They discuss her amazing past in gymnastics, performing for the circus, and in Hollywood, which led her to Pilates, as well as how we can all avoid burnout and set boundaries for ourselves and those around us. And now here's your host, personal trainer and stretch therapist, Gabrielle Mazar. Gabrielle Mazar. Welcome back to the Fit Minute Podcast, Fitness for Real People. I'm your host, Gabby Mazar. And on today's episode, I have Alicia Webb of Pilates with Alicia. She is out of Texas, right? Texas, uh, yeah. Houston area. Houston, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, so we are um, talking on Zoom, and um, I just met her today, actually. But uh, we're going to talk about Pilates and the Pilates world and kind of what's going on in our world. Uh, I think that people kind of see from the outside in, but we don't ever really t tell people from the inside out what's going on on our side. And it does get a little bit difficult and crazy at some times, but, um, welcome to the show, Alicia. Thank um, you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background and kind of how you got into Pilates. Of course, my background comes from elite level gymnastics and I was introduced to Matt Pilates from very early age, but I did not know that. And I was at national training camp and we had a Pilates specialist come in. And of course, like, I don't know what that means. I don't know who this lady is, but I know that we have training. I have to be here on the mat at this time. And we were doing a classical mat class. Again, I had no idea what it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> and then uh, she started, we had twice a day with her at the beginning of our sessions and at the end of our sessions. And so I had my first introduction probably around 10, 11, 12 years old with classical mat Pilates. Again, I had no idea. Yeah. And then um, after gymnastics, I became a gymnastics coach and choreographer and a certified judge. So my first half of my life was basically very deep in the gymnastics world. I did not know anything outside of the gym. And, you know, there's good and bad that comes with that, but I'm really grateful for my background and movement because I know for a fact that it makes me a better teacher in the day-to-day -day and what I do in my business. Yeah. Gymnastics is like a way different world than I came from because I, I came from like volleyball, basketball, you know, the, those kind of sports, but gymnastics is a whole other element, a whole other world of that side of sports that that i never i mean i am not flexible so flipping around is not my thing for sure um and it's hard it's it's really hard to do it's hard mentally it's hard physically on your body and kind of having that little bit of pilates is is kind of cool that you learned at such such a young age absolutely so getting into that and moving from you know, your gymnastics world, what got you out of that and kind of changing course? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's uh, very timely that we're recording this while the Olympics are happening. There's a thing that's going around with the two older gymnasts on Team USA. They're called the grandmas because you age out of gymnastics very quickly. So 24, I think, um, the girl is, from, oh gosh, is what's Is the name? oldest one on Blanky. the team. Yeah, She's Miss from Simone. Gilbert. Simone, oh. uh, there's Simone and there's two girls. There's one girl from Phoenix, Jade, and the other girl from Gilbert. And I totally- Oh, Michaela. Yeah. Michaela, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So those are the two girls that I'm referring to. And mm -hmm. so, like I said, it is very normal in the sport for you to be 16, 17, maybe to 20, 21, and you're aging out of the sport. And so I was around 16, 17. Granted, I started gymnastics when I was three years old no breaks, no stops. We don't have seasons. It is a full year round sport. And so then you're constantly training. That is so much on your body. That is so much on your mind and you don't stop. You don't, you don't have time to think about anything else because you have training camp and you have competitions and then you have international assignments and then you have school 
and then maybe you have like a little bit of social life, but not really. Yeah. Um, I was burnt out. And I remember that my body was hurting to the point where it was just like close to being unmanageable. And I was like, this doesn't, this isn't fun for me anymore. And so I kind of had a conversation with my coaches and I had a conversation with my parents and my coach was like, you need to sprinkle in some fun. And I was like, what is fun? Like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> all I knew was training, more training and a little bit of sleep and at school. That's literally all I knew. And so she took me to a circus camp for one week where I got to flip like I normally would, but there I learned how to do stage choreography and I learned how to do stage makeup. And at the end of the one week training camp, we did a performance. And I remember it was like a mini stage, like very, very small show. And this was in San Francisco at the San Francisco Circus Center. And I remember being on stage and I had so much fun. And I was like, this is what it needs to feel like. This is what I want it to feel. And then I was just kind of like, I kind of like it here. Then I get home, my parents sit me down for a family meeting and we're not a, I don't come from a family where we have like family meetings. We just like kind of do our own thing and then have like family dinners, but we don't have like deep, serious conversations. Sit down and, and, and yeah. things out and yeah. Yeah, we're not like that. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Like, am I in trouble? You know, like the good like girl gymnastics. So I was like, wait, I didn't do anything. What's going on? And um, my parents sat me down and they were basically saying that they got a call from the director of the circus center inviting me in to train with them. Wow. And I kind of looked at my parents and without a question, I was like, I want to do this. Like with no conversation of logistics, my parents were like, we will support you in what you want to do, which is I have the most supportive parents in the whole wide world because they literally let me run away with the circus. <laughs> <laughs> and so my mom and I, we moved to San Francisco and then I was tra training there for a year, uh, maybe a little bit more closer to two years. And that's when I learned circus arts. And that's where I started really getting into performing and really getting into choreography and just having so much fun. So then I still got to flip and turn and like wear sparkly things, except I was in a place mentally where I was allowed to express myself instead of being more robotic in the gymnastic sense. And competing. It's not, it's now not a competition and having the pressure of like Simone Biles said, I have the weight of the world on my shoulders. You exactly. Know, it's everybody watching you thinking, you know, how many more gold can she have when finally you crack? You're doing it because you enjoy yeah. it, which is what you enjoyed to begin with, right? Yeah. And then after that, um, my performing career took off and I performed for some of the biggest like entertainment companies in the world. And then I ended up living in Hawaii and had a summer in Branson. Then I lived in California for about eight years and I performed at like the Oscars and like all the cool like celebrity charity events. And it was just... Um, Hollywood is fun. <laughs> it was really fun to be able to be in that world. And just whenever I performed, like I seriously, like it just left my heart on stage. And I'm so grateful for that time in my life because it was so beautiful, but I knew it wasn't going to be my forever. Yeah. And similar things started happening in my body is because whenever you're on a contract, you're performing anywhere between five and six days a week with two or three shows, depending on your contract. And so that is a lot of repetitive movements. That is a lot of training and plus the traveling and plus all the other things. Like sometimes you have to do a meet and greet. So it's just a lot of body work once again. And I remember um, I got assigned Pilates as cross training. Oh, okay. And so then it was like, you know, I'm a little bit older. My brain is obviously more developed at this point. And I'm a little bit more grounded in myself as a human being. And I remember thinking, my body knows this movement. And it felt so freaking good. It felt so nourishing. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And literally, I'm telling you, whenever I was like close to the end of my performing career, it kept me like glued together. Yeah, it's. There's something about Pilates that is so very different than any other modality out there. It's just maybe kind of a restorative, even though it's exercise, even though it's strengthening, even though it's it's still training. It's just 
putting all the pieces together to kind of make your body do the things that it's supposed to do, like setting everything back the way it's supposed to be and putting everything back together and aligning everything this from, you know, the tip of the spine to the bottom yeah. of the tailbone to your feet, even, which we, I mean, how many people, when you exercise normally, who does any work on their feet? Never. Seriously. I mean, you never Seriously. work with your feet. So footwork is such a huge thing in Pilates because that's, it starts from the bottom up all the way to the tip of the head. So there really is nothing like it. It's kind of hard to explain even just on, you know, even from Matt Pilates to the reformer, to the chair, to the Cadillac, all these different pieces kind of have their place, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love what you said. It is one, a little bit hard to describe but to the fact that it is so nurturing and how it recalibrates you from the inside out, from the bottom up. I think that is a huge, huge factor in the magic of Pilates. Yeah. I, I remember when I was going through my training, um, cause I mean, I've worked out my whole life. I was a swimmer as a kid and then I was in dance. I was in sports. Like I've always worked out weightlifting and training has never been a thing. But I remember when I first started going through and I'd done Pilates before, but when I went through the training, um, my, my trainer was very, uh, very classical. She, mm -hmm. so her style is very, very Joseph Pilates. And I, like some of the things that we did, I was like, you're out of your mind. I don't bend that way. I can't do yeah. that. Like there is no freaking way. And now looking back on it, you know, years later, it's like things that I never thought that I could do. I don't think that I could live without doing, if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes know? total sense. Yeah. I just, from the movement of the spine and your twists to the extension, you know, going from when you're in, um, climb a tree on mm. short box and going back into extension. Like I couldn't even get my leg up to climb the tree. And now I can go all the way back and open up full extension. And, mm. and it's like those things that years, years ago, you, I look back on now and I, I kind of laugh about because you just don't realize why you hurt all the time or why things are causing injury. You know, I had a shoulder injury and it was probably caused from, I don't know, 80 million things, sleeping on my arm, carrying my yeah. purse, yeah. being on my phone, being right-handed. And you never correct those things. You're never undoing all the things that you're constantly doing to your body. So I just, I think it's really, it's really important for people to understand that, that it's why it's different, you know? Absolutely. So you had this amazing career because that just sounds so much fun. Like being in Hollywood and doing all of those things sounds like it was just tons of fun. But what, what led you to where you are now in Houston with your own studio and teaching other people Pilates? There came a point where after I knew performing was kind of wrapping, you know, the season of my life was wrapping up and I knew that I was meant to be a teacher. And I believe in the saying, once a teacher, always a teacher. And I don't really care what you teach. It's just the fact that connecting with people is so special. Connecting with people through movement is unbelievably rewarding. And I missed coaching and I missed training, but I knew I did not want to go back to the gymnastics environment. I wanted to expand my skill set. So then I got certified in yoga and in bar. And then I started teaching at 11 places. 11. Who many places? Yep. <laughs> I kind of maybe have that extreme personality thing going on, <laughs> but I was teaching client facing seven days a week at 11 different locations. And let me tell you teachers out there, please do not do that. <laughs> Give yourself one, Ooh. at least two days off because you will crash and burn. I crash and burned. And then I was in a pretty serious car accident and I 
found my way back to Pilates because physical therapy was not working for me. And I started kind of butting heads with my physical therapists. And I kept telling them like, my body needs so much more than this. And they were just kind of, they were doing their job. They were following protocol, but we needed it for me personally needed to do something different. I needed something more nurturing, nourishing and full body. And so I started doing Pilates hmm. and it literally brought me back to life. I, and I was like, go ahead. Yeah. I, I love that because I, I don't, I don't disagree with, I think that, per, you know, um, physical therapy has a place, but I have always been such a proponent for that. It's, there's no one thing. There's no one thing that can cure anything. There's no one exercise that's perfect. Like people that go a hundred percent into CrossFit or a hundred percent into orange theory, or even a hundred percent into Pilates. Like there is more you have to do you have to be well-rounded. So I, I definitely agree that although physical therapy probably was doing help, you needed more. And and mm -hmm. it's it's important to listen to your body too. And I don't think we do that very often. But so you, we, we wanted to touch on something and you already kind of touched on it because we're talking about working at 11 places and, and getting burnt out. And over the past year, us teachers and studio owners have kind of been through the ringer. Um, and honestly, I think all personal, all personal trainers and, and, and instructors and teachers get a little burnt out at one time, especially when we're first starting, we kind of go balls to the wall. It's like, I never yes. worked at 11 places, <laughs> but like two, three, and then like, like a part-time job was a kind of a thing for a long time, but, but you do, you work seven days a week and then you get to a point where you get sick. For me, it was, I got Hashimoto's. Mm. So I have an autoimmune disease because of the stress that I was putting on myself and my body. So it's important that we realize that uh, burnout is a real thing. Um, but we wanted, you wanted to touch on your experiences over the last year with, with instructors and teachers and studio owners and taking care of ourselves. Can you go a little bit into that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm having closed door conversations with my community here in Houston, Texas. And I talk to people that are nutritionists and physical therapists and PTs and chiropractors. Um, pretty much everyone in the wellness, healthcare adjacent field. And we are all so tired. The story across the board is all of the same. We're almost like, we've had it up to here. We're, I don't want to say we're drowning, but it kind of feels like it. And I just really want to bring up the conversation of instructors and studio owners and client facing individuals, please take some time for yourself. If you need to take a nap, can you schedule 20 minutes to take a nap? Are you hydrating? Are you getting enough actual rest to where your adrenal glands are not like fired up all the time? I don't know what is happening, but if the same conversation is being had all the time, what are we doing to fix that? What are we doing to take care of ourselves so that we can show up for our clients and for our businesses? Because if we continue to like running the way that we are, I don't think it's going to end well. It's going to end in business is closing and adrenal fatigue that's maybe causes very serious damage. Yeah. I, I'm not going to show you my last Instagram post because that's kind of exactly what I just wrote about before this, but it's, I, I have honestly myself gotten to that point too. And I know a couple of my colleagues as well have been to that point too, where we're just burnt and it's very difficult because in this field and for us as teachers, we kind of bring it all. We, we bring it all to the table. We put everything out there. We give everything we can to our clients. And at some point, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're running on empty. We're, we're yeah. really, we're low, we're low here. It's like, there's so much that's been thrown at us and, I know a lot of other businesses feel this way too, 
Um, but, uh, but especially in the healthcare field, your job is to literally take care of other people. So if you're, I mean, if you're in nursing or if you're a nutritionist, or if you're a naturopath, or if you're a trainer, a teacher, you're going into work every day and giving everything that you have. And even if it's this small amount to the people that are standing right in front of you, because they need it. They need right. it and they always need it. And you're always there to give it. But we are running on empty because we just don't know anymore. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing, how we're <laughs> supposed to be running our business. Are we supposed to be advertising and getting more people in? Or are we supposed to close our doors for a period of time and just let things settle? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows. And everyone is just kind of, there's like a little phrase. I don't know if I heard it somewhere. I feel like I made it up kind of. It's like a Russian phrase that's been translated. It's kind of like we're running around with our heads cut off. We're like chickens running around with our heads cut off. And like, yeah. what are we doing? Where are we going? Nobody knows. Well, that's the cool thing is right. Like nobody knows we're all in the same freaking boat. And while we're in that boat, I say, let's have some tea. Let's have a glass of wine. Let's take a nap, cozy on up, take care of yourself. Like, let's bring that energy up. You as a business owner, you as an instructor, nutritionist, I don't care what you are, take care of yourself. Yeah. Because and your I, clients need you. Right. And I think the first thing we let slip is our own health. You know, we're not exercising the way that we normally do. We're not sleeping or doing yoga or meditating. And I mean, that's something I'm very, um, like I try to work out, you know, five, six days a week, even if it's a yoga or a Pilates or hiking or whatever it is. I do my meditations, even if it's a five, 10 minute meditation of just like rainfall, who cares, whatever it is. But yeah, those little things kind of start to slip. And then it's, this one goes and this one goes and this one goes and this one goes. And I've kind of always said to clients, especially moms, because moms tend to put everything else in the world ahead of them. And I've, for years, I've said, you have to put yourself first because if you can't take care of yourself, how can you take care of your family? And now right. we're all finding ourselves in that boat where the ship is sinking and we're not, we're not able to, I said to somebody the other day, we're, we're trying to get the water out of the sh sinking ship with spoons, oh you know, God. it's like all this That's thing. accurate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on, come on. We got this. We got this. <laughs> and it's just not going anywhere, you know? Yeah. But, but I think you're right in talking to the community I, and I think we have to help each other, which I'm glad you reached out to me because I, I do believe in helping our, our community and talking to other people in our community to get kind of the word out for that and understanding that that everybody here is feeling the same way. That no matter where we are, if you're in Texas or if you're in Europe or if you're in Australia, we're all feeling like this and we're all doing this together. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's... I think it's really important. Taking care of yourself is important and we need to do it too, for sure. Yeah, I think it's just a beautiful, this is just, if anything, please take this as a gentle reminder because we all know we need to take care of ourselves. We all know this isn't like a new concept. This is technically not a new conversation. I think we've just been forgotten and it's time to remember and it's time to take little baby steps. Yeah, I agree. Add some things back in. So speaking of... Uh, baby steps and, and trying to remember over, I think over the last like year and a half since there's been a lot of turmoil, I think with a lot of people and a lot of different situations. And um, we kind of chatted about boundaries. And I think, I think maybe for a long time, there, there's always been boundaries in our industry and it's kind of like an unspoken boundary. And I think that you feel the same way I do is that people have kind of lost that, like that understanding that we're running a business. We are also human. We are also people trying to get through this as well. So, uh, you know, 
there there are things that we need to set as teachers and let our clients know like no this is okay or you know let's do this or that you know i've definitely had to fire clients in the past and i know that i'm going to have to in the future it's not an easy thing to do and we never ever want to do it so there's the idea of setting boundaries is is tough. Can you tell me kind of your experience with that and what you've been going through? Yeah, absolutely. Um, once again, going back to everything that business owners have had to deal with, everything is just very flexible right now. And it's time to kind of reel it back in and start to communicate with your clients, maybe clients and your team a little bit more firmly. Small example, clients should not be texting instructors past a certain time. Ooh. I, they there's no that? reason. Oh, we don't do There's that. no <laughs> reason why a client should be texting you at like 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. No, that's family time. That's your time. So if you have someone, even if some team member is doing that to you, if like the place isn't on fire, you can reach to me out in the morning. Yeah. So it's just kind of like those little day-to-day -day things that kind of weigh heavy on your shoulders. You know, think of how, if you prefer for your clients to email you, why are they texting you? You need to remind them, hey, it's just very simple two-second conversation. It is my preference that you email me if we have a schedule change. That's that's just an example. If a, if a client is wanting to constantly reschedule, okay. But also, let's talk about that. What is going on in their schedule that doesn't need to affect your schedule and your um, mental capacity, especially if that client is consistently wanting to shift and do this and do this, do this. This is my availability. Right. Leave right. it as that. And it's. I think it's. Uh, it's time to start setting firmer boundaries and how people communicate within the studio, that includes clients, that includes teachers, that includes anyone who's stepping foot into your business. We need to start to really tidy things up. Yeah, I 100% I agree with you. I know um, the texting thing doesn't happen with us, luckily. But if it does, I will find you. And I no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I am. Um, that, that's, not, that's not one for us. But I know, like, as far as um as far as the schedule thing uh, a, a lot of us kind of when especially when we're first starting out or especially when we're you know maybe now when things are a little crazy we're trying to get people back in so we try and fit people in whenever they can and something that i learned very early on is that people will take advantage of that like I have a schedule. These are my hours. I do not work outside of these hours. I don't come in before 7 a.m. I don't work after 6 p.m. I don't do it because I have to have a life too. I don't yeah. come in on Sundays. Sundays are my only full day off, period. Don't ask. Don't question it. I won't be here. You know, if anybody needs coverage and there's an emergency, of course, I'm the, I'm the boss. So yes, I will absolutely be there. But you know, this is, this is my time. These are our boundaries. And I think you definitely have to set that because give an inch, take a mile. People will absolutely, absolutely take whatever they can. And, and that it sucks, but I guess it's kind of human nature. <laughs> yes, but, of course. But also and if people don't know your boundaries, they can't, they can't fit within that and fit within your values either. Absolutely, which is why we, as the authority figures in the industry, we have to speak with, I call it like queenly communication. Communicate queenly. How does a, how does a queen communicate? Mm. She lets everyone know this is what's up. <laughs> yeah. In a respectful, professional manner, but people need to know what's going on. I had a client, um, this was so funny. This is one of my favorite stories. Such a consistent client comes in for cross training, huge runner, uh, big time lawyer, that kind of personality, wonderful human being. And he always loves Sunday workouts. And 
at the time I was doing Sundays, but not anymore. I'm actually going to work four days a week now, which is very healthy for me. And that is something that I had to work up to. Obviously, if you're a new instructor starting out, you got to you gotta put in your time and say you yes. Gotta to hustle. You got to hustle. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm grateful to be kind of where I'm at. And so this client was like, oh, Alicia, let's schedule in some like Sunday sessions. And I looked at him and I said, with who? He was like, oh, with you specifically. And I said, I'm not going to be here. And he was like, where are you going to be? And I was like, I'm going to be at brunch with my girlfriends. And you should have seen the look on his face. I think people forget that we sometimes try to have a life outside of the studio. Like not that they're beings. <laughs> right, right. We're not just like Pilates robots or yeah. business owners that are robotic. We we like to do stuff outside of the studio and we need to create our, uh, for ourselves the time and the space to enjoy life outside of our businesses. Yeah. I think that's very healthy and very necessary. Yeah, I think also setting boundaries for me, what's most important is, you know, like my my biggest asset, I'm sure for you too, is is, is my teachers. I have a staff of 15 teachers and it is very, very important to me that they are respected, that they are treated well, that they are taken care of because without them, my business does not run. And if they feel threatened or someone mistreats them in any way, in any way, I am very much like mama, mama bird. Like I do not want any of my teachers to ever feel like they are in a situation where I do not stand up for them or like, you know, someone can mistreat them because that is really, really important to me. So portraying to my teachers that, that I am behind you a hundred percent, which, which I had to do when, you know, initially we, we closed down and reopened and we had the, the mass conversation. We sat down and had a meeting you know, we were all on Zoom and I, and I said, you tell me how you feel comfortable and what you want, because ultimately you guys are the one here. And every one of them said masks at all times, period. And I said, that's what we're going to do. And I told them, this is what we're going to put out. This is what we're going to say. And if anyone has any question or says anything to you, I will back you 100% all the way this is my business they do not come to you with grievances they come to me i don't want you having to deal with that at all and i think that setting that boundary to them and to the clients it kind of it kind of smooths things out even a little bit because then the teachers know what to expect they don't have to question it at all and the clients know what to expect and so you you don't have any blurred lines. You have a specific, this is what we're doing and this is what, what it's going to be. So I love that. That is an incredible example of leadership and queenly communication. That could, yeah, that, that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just it's important. I think it's something we forget about, too, because we're all kind of just in the mix. We're all kind of here just going and not remembering that yeah that you have a team and a, even though you have a business to run and you need to line your pockets with money you know they do too but they don't want to feel like they're coming into work to be disrespected or be treated poorly like it's it's definitely a different world right now and it's it's hard it's hard to navigate through all of this and i think people really really forget that and don't don't care that you're doing the best that you can with what we know because this is not running a normal business running a normal business you have all kinds of fires that you're putting out all the time but this is a whole other level of unknown we have no clue we have no clue what we're doing we have no clue where we're going how long things are going to continue, if people are even going to come back. I mean, a lot of tears have been shed over the past year and a half, year and nine months. You know, it's it's definitely been hard, um, but we, we do it because we love our clients and we want to continue that, right? Absolutely. And for the community, for our local community, 
I love the fact that my Pilates business is a safe haven. Yeah, absolutely. I have a hundred percent been told that over time and time again, this is the only place that I go other than home. Mm, that's beautiful. That and like I, I feel my safe. Heart. I feel safe here. I feel comfortable here. And thank you for being here because I need this for my mental space. And that's, wow. that's huge. That's huge for me. I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm sure that your clients are so incredibly grateful that you're there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else you want to add about your business or anything important or anything fun going on or new or interesting that you think people might find fun? <laughs> new or interesting. My goodness. What's new? What's interesting? What's new? What's interesting? I have started planning little mini road trips in Texas. And that's new and interesting for me once again, encouraging instructors and owners, if you can, to just give yourself a little change of environment. I went to Austin over the weekend and I'm telling you, I am back. And I feel like a brand new woman and a brand new energy. And I'm in the studio this week, obviously, with my people. And they're like, whoa, you're like a little tan and a little refreshed. And I'm like, yes, it's because I gave myself the opportunity to get out of town. And now I'm just sprinkling that a little bit more. And that's new and interesting to me. And I hope that you guys listening out there plan a little road trip too, if you can. Just get out of town. Even just, if it's for a weekend, just do it. Just book it. Yep. Even short weekends are amazing. So, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I think there was so much good information and I love that I can hear that other people are, are kind of in the same boat. It's, it's nice to know that even across states, we still have the same people, the same issues, the same strengths, the same love and care for ourselves and our clients and our clients do us. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. If anybody is listening and looking for Pilates in the Houston area, um, look her, look, look her up. Look her yes, up. please. Yeah. What's and your, if your website is? PilatesWithAlicia.com. And same thing with Instagram, Pilates with Alicia. All you have to do is type in O-L-E and then it'll pop up. Because Alicia is kind of hard to spell. Fantastic. I'll have that in the show notes too. So if, uh, if anybody's in Houston or even wants to pop in for a class, if you're stopping there, please, please stop. Support local businesses and support local Pilates studios or anything to, to get us by because we surely need it and we love having you guys. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks everyone for listening to the Fit Minute podcast and we will all see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Fit Minute Podcast, Fitness for Real People with your host, Gabrielle Mazar. If you would like more information on today's episode, you can find it in the show notes or you can find it on Gabrielle's website at www.healthybodyworksaz.com. Be sure to share the show, give this podcast a review and subscribe so you won't miss an episode. Join us next week to hear more stories from people just like you. This has been the Fit Minute Podcast, Fitness for Real People with Gabrielle Mazar.